All right, so to resolve the one last thing of uh, the light actually coming in from this side, I actually want to mask that off somehow. Um, so we could imagine if we just put a large plane that covered that face, the light would no longer be able to get in there. But then we do have the issue of not being able to see into that space ourselves. So I created a new layer called Hiding Box, and I'm just going to create a plane. I want a vertical plane, and my plane's going to start all the way out here, run to there, and be about that big. I'm going to set it to my hiding box layer. So obviously if I do a rendering right now, I've got nothing. I've got a big white plane with some kind of uh, model poking barely through. So we're going to have to create a custom material for this piece. So if I come into my materials, I'm going to right click, add a new material, add a V-Ray material, and I'm going to rename this hiding. So the settings for this are, are pretty easy. Uh, the color really doesn't matter, but I'm going to set it to black. That way there's no chance of this material kind of leaving a greenish tone on something else. I'm also going to set its transparency to 100% transparent, white. So black diffuse color, white diffuse transparency. The only other setting I really need to change is right clicking hiding. This is my hiding material. Oh, sorry, I'm going to hit the plus, right click, and I'm adding a refraction layer. So here I have my refraction tab, and I want this to be opposites. Uh, my refraction is white, my transparency is black. Uh, and here, if we apply this, and we'll do a preview, you see we can see right through it. You can also see that this kind of checkered background within this setting is deformed and that's caused off of the IOR here. Here it's 1.55. I'm going to change that to 1.0. And now it's perfectly flat. So what this is doing is actually blocking out the light. Uh, the transparency of the refraction is zero. The light cannot make it through, but the transparency of the color is clear. I can see through. So that uh, that's already been applied to my big plane here. I'm set up my view get in on the space. I'm going to come to options, output. I'm going to get the camera aspect ratio and lock it so that my scene that I've set up here will be the same size as the rendering. I'll do a you know, medium size one. That way we don't have to wait the entire time while it renders. And there, you can see we're, we're looking in through the space. We're not seeing this red plane at all. Uh, we're no longer getting the light coming down this wall and on the back, we're only having light coming through the windows, and that's the way the scene should actually be illuminated. Let's see, as it finishes up here, I think we'll see. It's, it's you know, much more accurate depiction of the space we were looking for. Now if I wanted, I have you know this large white plane that kind of wraps around. That's only to help with kind of the ambient light bouncing, and I have a face here. I could come in and map a dirt texture or maybe a grass texture on top. Um, more likely than not, I would actually come in with Photoshop and, and just Photoshop some grass in place. And I'd probably spend a little more time, put some trees in so that we don't see this kind of harsh edge where the plane just stops. But that's something that we could all just, you know, work forward in Photoshop with. It's not something I have to render out. Even the dirt, I could come back in and just put in a, you know, kind of a large texture of dirt. And, uh, and make fake that all in Photoshop. All right, so if I look around, uh, I've got some nice light qualities on the inside. It's clear that I have a few little glitches here. These white dots should definitely not be there. Um, so that's probably something with just the render setting. Uh, to do that, I'm gonna come back into my rendering options, go File, and I'm just gonna try to load one of the defaults. Let's see, let's see, let's try here, the GI QMC LC medium, just to see if using a different style of uh, algorithm to solve this, this lighting condition uh, would work better for us. So shoot another rendering. It's much, much larger, so I'll probably just fast forward through this portion of rendering time and we'll see it on the other side.
Um, so there it is. There's the final rendering. It took quite some time, which was just because we changed the settings. But you can see we got rid of all those little dots and pixels. Um, we actually have some overexposed areas, but overall, I'm really happy with the quality of it. Uh, the glass looks really great. You can see kind of the, the way the light comes in here. Uh, I think it really conveys the space uh, really easily. Uh, and like I said, you could always come back in and look at kind of photoshopping in grass and trees. Uh, if I was actually going to make this a full-fledged rendered scene, I'd, I'd, I'd definitely do something with the terrain and not just have this flat plane. Um, but that's something to look forward to and uh, maybe some more uh, tutorials in the future. Uh, the final and third part of this series is just going to be looking at some of those mapping options. So I'm going to come back and uh, just preset up a scene with uh, some different options and different maps applied. And so we can look at how changing those settings actually shifts and changes the materials. So look for that one next.